They are raw, intimidating, aggressive, angry, energetic, emotional, moody, chaotic, loud, pure. They are Metallica. 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 Late 1981, amateur tennis player and drummer from Gentaf, Denmark, by the name of Lars Torben Ulrich, decides to move to Los Angeles, California. Hungry to play metal music and inspired by the British metal icons Black Sabbath, Deep Purple, Diamond Head, Angel Witch, and others, Lars drops an advertisement in the LA newspaper that is known as The Recycler, looking for bandmates. The ad is responded to by guitarist James Hetfield. Ulrich and Hetfield come together and start jamming. The band name came from a friend of Ulrich who was brainstorming names for a metal fanzine. He was considering either Metallica or Metal Mania. Ulrich took Metallica for his band. Later on, another guitarist responded to the advertisement. It was Dave Mustaine. The three recorded a song for the compilation album Metal Massacre for the Metal Blade label owned by Brian Slagel. Ulrich played drums, Mustaine played lead guitar, although Lloyd Grant played the solo, and Hetfield played both rhythm and bass guitar due to not having a bass player at the time. He also did vocals, and the song was called Hit the Lights. In 1982, the band had its first bass player, Ron McGovney, and they started playing live shows. Later, they recorded their first demo, Power Metal. Late 1982, Hetfield and Ulrich attended a show at the nightclub known as Whiskey A Go Go. On stage was the band Trauma with their bass player, Cliff Burton. Hetfield and Ulrich were mind blown by Burton's skills. He played his bass like a guitar and was dubbed the Hendrix of bass by somebody we'll mention later. After traveling to San Francisco as requested by Cliff, Metallica wanted McGovney to leave the band due to lack of contributions, and was replaced by Cliff. James Hetfield, rhythm guitar and vocals. Lars Ulrich, drums and bongs. Dave Mustaine, lead guitar. Cliff Burton, bass guitar. Metallica then recorded the No Life to Leather demo with Cliff on bass and showed it to John Zazula who then offered them a record deal and signed them to his label, Megaforce Records. In May 1983, Metallica was planning to start recording their debut album. However, and before the recording process even began... And we all got up early one morning and uh, walked into the other room where Dave was sleeping and... Shake, shake, shake. Dave wakes up and rolls over and... Oh, what's going on, guys? I look up and I see the four of them and they said, you're out of the band. And I said, what, no warning? No second chance? The famous line, Dave, you're out of the band. Uh, you know, well, you know, when's my plane leave? Uh, <laughs> well, you're spending the next four days on a Greyhound bus that leaves in 45 minutes to pack your shit together and let's go to the bus station before you even know what hit you. And that was that. When we would get drunk, they would get silly and I would get really violent. And violent people and silly people don't mix when they're inebriated. The same day, Mustaine was replaced by Exodus guitarist Kirk Hammett. Kirk is known for his use for the wah pedal on every single solo he plays. Metallica's first album was originally titled Metal Up Your Ass. However, and as a result of conflicts with the label and the distributors refusing the title, the album was renamed Kill Em All. Kill Em All was described by critics as fast, heavy, the true birth of thrash metal. Meanwhile, Dave Mustaine went on to seek revenge by forming rival band Megadeth. He received credit for some songs on Kill Em All, The Four Horsemen, Jump in the Fire, Phantom Lord, and Metal Militia. The Four Horsemen was actually a reworked version of a song that Mustaine had already written that ended up on Megadeth's first album, Killing Is My Business. It was titled Mechanics.
In August 1984, Metallica released their second album, Ride the Lightning, that reached number 100 on the Billboard. Again, Dave Mustaine was credited for songs on the album. This time, they were the title track and the call of Cthulhu. After attending a Metallica concert in September, Michael Olago, the director of Electro Records and Cliff Bernstein, the co-founder of Cure Prime Management, decided to sign the band to Electro and make them a client of Cure Prime. Metallica's third album, Master of Puppets, released in 1986, reached number 29 on the Billboard and was certified gold that year, and in 2003, platinum. The album is considered to be the band's greatest achievement. After the release of Master of Puppets, the band supported none other than Ozzy Osbourne on a US tour. The train of Metallica was rolling fast, until suddenly, it crashed and burned. On September 27, 1986, the band was in Sweden on its way to perform for the Damage Incorporated tour. They had a poor tour bus. Around sunrise, the bus driver lost control and the bus skidded. Cliff, who was sleeping, was thrown out of the window and the bus fell on his body, crushing him to death. After a while, Metallica decided to audition bass players to find a replacement for Cliff. The last one to try out was Jason Newsted of Flotsam and Jetsam, who dubbed Cliff the Jimi Hendrix of bass. Jason was finally chosen as Cliff's replacement. In 1987, an extended play of cover songs titled Garage Days was released, in an effort to relieve grief and stress after Cliff's death, and also to test Newsted's skills, which were very audible on the record. Unlike... In 1988, Metallica released their fourth album and their first with a new bass player Jason Newstead and Justice For All. The politically charged album took on lyrical themes like corruption, legal injustice and censorship. The fourth track, One, was the first to have a music video. The song is based on the 1971 anti-war film Johnny Got His Gun and the music video even features scenes from the film. During the recording process, the band was still grieving the death of Cliff which was all put into the sound and production of the album. The sound was dry and heavy. The one thing that was most noticeable was the bass mixing. After hearing the original mix of the album, producer Fleming Wasmussen was told to take down the bass, making it almost completely inaudible on the record. According to Hetfield, the unusual mixing was due to the bass lines doubling most guitar parts, making the instruments indiscernible, despite Rasmussen saying the bass tracks were brilliant. Newstead claimed the mixing decision was simple hazing on part of Ulrich and Hetfield, which the two have denied. The album reached number 6 on the Billboard and was certified platinum. In 1989, they had what was probably their most energetic concert in Seattle, which ended up on their live album, Live Shit. Binge and Purge. In 1991, Metallica released their fifth and self-titled album that is better known as The Black Album, with a new producer, Bob Rock, who had previously worked with Aerosmith, Motley Crue, and others, which definitely caused a change in Metallica's sound. They moved on to a slower, simpler, heavier, and more melodic style. The album also included more slow, soft tracks than any of the older albums. It sold 650,000 copies in its first week, got certified platinum 16 times, and helped turn Metallica into one of the best mainstream acts and the top concert draw. The same year in September, the band had its biggest concert up to this date, at the Tushino airfield in Moscow in front of 1.6 million people. 
And in January 1992, they had the second concert for the Live Shit album in San Diego. In August 1992, Metallica and Guns N' Roses both co-headlined the stadium tour in Montreal, Canada. During Fade to Black, I'm up there playing the part, and these colored flames are going off. I'm a little confused on where I should be. I walk forward, I walk back. We have these flashes of magnesium that burns at 1,200 degrees, 1,800 degrees, who knows, but hot enough to melt metal. The pyro guy doesn't see me that I've walked back out there. A big colored flame goes right up under me, uh, and instantly I you know, squint and turn. Hetfield suffered both second and third degree burns to his arms, face, hands and legs. 17 days later, Metallica returned to stage with John Marshall of Metal Church, temporarily replacing Hetfield on guitar. In 1993, they had the third and final concert for Life Shit in Mexico City. The album was released in November. In 1996, and after almost five years of touring, Metallica released their sixth album, Load. Just like the Black Album, Load debuted at number one on the Billboard. The album was another change, not only in the band's sound, but also their look. It featured genres like Southern Rock, Blues Rock, Country Rock, and Alternative Rock, which was not well received by the hardcore 80s fans. The sequel, Reload, was released the very next year and it also debuted at number one. Critics thought it was a bit heavier than the prequel and have more fat grooves but was also dull and unfinished on some songs. The second track, The Memory Remains featured additional vocals by Maryam Faithful. The year after, the band released another cover album, Garage Incorporated, which featured the original Garage Days from 1987. And in 1999, they teamed up with the San Francisco Symphony Orchestra, conducted by Michael Kamen, and came up with the live album, s &M. The album included original Metallica songs played live with the orchestra, in addition to two new songs, Minus Human and No Leaf Clover. In the year 2000, Metallica found out that a demo of the song I Disappear, which wasn't yet released, and Metallica's entire discography at the time were being leaked. After tracing the source, they discovered it was the peer-to-peer -peer file sharing network that is known as Napster. The song was to be released for the soundtrack of Mission Impossible 2. The band took legal action and filed a lawsuit against the site, which the band won. However, the case resulted in backlash from the Metallica fans who believed the band was directly attacking them, especially after Lars collected a ton of names of the people who were downloading songs from the network and read them out loud in public. And just when things couldn't get any worse... He fucking left the band! He fucking left the band! Which part of that is... Hello? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? He fucking left the band! January 2001, Jason Newstead officially quits Metallica. Private and personal reasons, and the physical damage I have done to myself over the years while playing the music that I love, said Newstead. He also said that he wanted to release an album with his side project that was known as Echo Brain, which was rejected by Metallica, mainly James. When someone does a side project, it takes away from the strength of Metallica. Jason eventually decided to leave and begin working with Echo Brain. Reload was the last studio album to feature him.
The same year in July, and just before the band went back to studio, James Hetfield decided to enter rehab to treat his alcoholism and other issues that had been haunting him for years. The band was inactive with a future in doubt. After James returned in April 2002, the band finally entered the studio to work on its 8th album. The band had hired a therapist the previous year to help them get through the tension that had been building up among them, which Jason Newstead thought was lame and weak. Producer Bob Rock also stepped in and became temporary bass player. In June 2003, Metallica finally came up with Sane Anger, the one album that sounded like none of Metallica's previous albums, drew mixed reactions from both critics and fans. The sound was raw, unprocessed, and chaotic. Criticism was mainly directed at the unusual, steely-sounding snare drum and the absence of guitar solos. It was the first time all members were allowed to equally contribute to music and lyrics as the writing process was taken over by James and Lars only. The album debuted at number one and the title track won the Grammy Award for the best metal performance. That entire period was well documented in the film that was released in 2004, Some Kind of Monster. After the completion of the record, the band started auditioning for a new bass player. From suicidal tendencies, infectious grooves and Ozzy Osbourne's band, Robert Trujillo was chosen. Metallica went back to perform live and promote Saint Anger. In 2007, Metallica said goodbye to longtime producer Bob Rock and welcomed Rick Rubin, who had previously worked with bands like System of a Down and Slayer. In September 2008, Death Magnetic was released. The album was a return for the band to its thrash metal roots, but was also criticized for being overcompressed, overproduced, and loud. That was a result of the Loudness War, which Rick Rubin was part of. The album debuted at number one, making Metallica the first band to ever have five consecutive albums debuting at number one on the Billboard. In 2011, a sort of sequel titled Beyond Magnetic was released. On April 4, 2009, Metallica was officially inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. The band performed live with Jason Newstead for the first time since the year 2000, and the father of Cliff Burton, Ray, accepted the honor on behalf of his deceased son. On June 22, 2010, a concert in Sofia, Bulgaria, featuring the four of Metallica, Slayer, Megadeth, and Anthrax, took place and was billed the Big Four. In October 2011, Metallica collaborated with Lou Reed and was featured on the album that is known as Lulu. Lulu was generally negatively reviewed, mainly due to Reed's performance. In 2013, the concert film Metallica Through the Never was released, starring both the band and Dane DeHaan. The same year in December and after performing in the Antarctica, the band became the first ever to play on all seven continents. In November 2016, and after eight years, the 10th album Hardwired to Self-Destruct was released and debuted at number one. The album was released through Metallica's vanity label Blackened Recordings. In the summer 2017, the Worldwide tour began in an effort to promote the album. In March 2019, Rob Trujillo said that Metallica had begun writing new material for the next and upcoming Metallica album. In September 2019, the band teamed up again with the San Francisco Symphony Orchestra and came up with SNM 2. On the 27th day of that same month, Metallica announced that James Hetfield had re entered rehab and as a result, an Australia-New Zealand tour was postponed. After the COVID-19 outbreak, all tour dates were either postponed or cancelled. In May 2020, the band uploaded a virtual acoustic version of the song Blackened, titled Blackened 2020. Metallica was influenced mainly by British heavy metal bands of the new wave of British heavy metal, Iron Maiden, Motorhead, and Diamond Head. Early metal bands like Black Sabbath, Led Zeppelin, Deep Purple, and punk rock bands like The Ramones, The Misfits, and Killing Joke. The style of Metallica has changed numerous times throughout history, from essential thrash to progressive metal 
to a slower, more basic and melodic metal, to blues rock and southern rock, to even having some elements of new metal. Then they went back to thrash, and Hardwired was basically a combination of all the styles they had explored during their career. It was actually compared by Rolling Stone to both Injustice For All and The Black Album. The lyrical themes have also changed with every album. On the first four, they explored topics of war, violence, injustice, corruption, religion, drugs, insanity, and the apocalypse, in addition to personal issues. They have more radio-friendly lyrics on the Black Album, those on Load, Reload, and Sane Anger were the darkest and most personal. On Death Magnetic, they returned to the apocalyptic themes, and on Hardwired, they brought new topics such as fame and the dangers of it, good and evil, and machinery. Metallica is now one of the most influential bands in the entire music world. They are part of what is known as the Big Four of Thrash Metal, alongside Slayer, Megadeth, and Anthrax. They have sold over 125 million records worldwide, making them one of the most commercially successful bands ever. They were ranked 42nd on VH1's 100 Greatest Artists of All Time. Their songs have been covered by countless bands. October 28, which is today, is the official Metallica Day in San Francisco. They were awarded the MTV Icon Award in 2003. They have also been featured in video games, Guitar Hero, Guitar Hero 3, Guitar Hero World Tour, Guitar Hero Metallica, and Rock Band. It's been 39 years since Lars and James started what is now one of the cornerstones of the music industry. 39 years and the train of Metallica is still rolling, faster than ever. This train has crashed and burned so many times, but there was never a time when it wasn't back on track, rolling faster than before. This is Metallica. This is the monster of Metallica. And this monster lives.